Hello students, welcome back to our Smart PLS video series. In this video number 18, we are shedding light on the validation as well as the assessment process of formative indicators in a formative measurement model. If you are new to this channel, please subscribe below and smash that bell icon so you receive a notification whenever we post something new. Please stay tuned. All right, my fellow students, then let us check the process that we follow in order to validate a formative indicator in a formative measurement model using Smart PLS. All right. Okay. So, first of all, I have already provided you, you can check the link above with a very detailed video about formative and reflective indicators and the differences between both of them. All right, so let's first just do a very quick overview. In a formative indicator, all right, what we do here in a formative indicator, we, we have, for instance, life stress as a construct, the indicators of life stress form, make up that construct. So job loss, divorce, and the recent accident, those make up, all right, make up the, the formative construct that we have a uh, life stress, okay. And those indicators can have a plus or minus zero correlation, okay? So they don't have to be correlated at all, okay? In contrary to reflect, reflective indicators where they can be very highly correlated, okay? So they are just separate. Job loss, divorce, recent accidents could be, for instance, financial troubles, family troubles, etc. Make up that or form that construct that is a formative construct. However, in case of reflective indicators here, they are just manifesting on the construct, okay? Like timely, timeliness can be measured by accommodating last minute, punctuality, et cetera, and they have to be highly correlated, okay? Sorry, so that's just an overview about formative and reflective indicators. Okay, if we proceed further, what's the process here, okay? Formative indicators, as I mentioned, they don't have to be correlated at all, okay? High correlation is not expected and it's a problem to have high correlation, okay? Because high correlation may lead to an impact of the estimation of the weights or the loadings and their significance, okay? How do we validate these formative indicators while using a smart PLS or having a formative measurement model using smart PLS? The first step is step number one is checking for VIF, okay? The variance inflation factor. All right, let's see. Okay, let's see here. Okay, so step one is the variance uh, inflation factor. So. We have two schools here, and we may cite two references. We have here at all, and we have Diamantopoulos and Seagull, okay, 2006. Uh, the first school allows for five, okay? VIF has to be equal or less than five, all right? If we have this, then we don't have a, a correlation issue. Uh, another school says, no, it has to be uh, higher or greater. If it is greater or equal to 3.3, then we have a major collinearity issue. So we're gonna adapt, adopt the first school since it's the most adopted in the literature. All right, and then we proceed further here. All right, in, this, in the first step, as I mentioned, we, are, we assess for the level of collinearity in the formative measurement model. Uh, if we have, uh, VIF higher than five, then we have to treat collinearity problems, okay? Uh, after treating them, we then check again. If VIF is higher than five, then we dismiss the formative measurement model. If it is then lower than five, we analyze the significance of the outer white and interpret the indicators absolute and relative contribution, okay? Uh, therefore, all right, so step number one, we check for VIF, all right? So let's see how we can check for VIF, all right? 
I'll simply just go to share screen. Here's some annotation here. All right. Uh, for the annotation, I'll use a spotlight. All right. So we have here the TAM model, all right, as I mentioned. Let me get myself a bit bigger. We have the TAM model here. Okay, and as I mentioned, the here we, I have to make a copy of this model for sake of simplicity. So simply that's a copy of the model. All right, and for sake of simplicity, well, I need to use only two variables here. I don't need trust, all right? I wouldn't need behavior and intention to use. And then let me just delete this flow between these two variables. Okay, and then uh, I have to here, that, that's a reflective model for sake of simplicity here, I just switch to formative. Okay, that's a, a reflective indicators, we have to switch then to formative. Okay, and let's go ahead and check for uh, collinearity issue. How do I check for collinearity issue? Very simple, what I do here is, okay, let me use a spotlight again. Okay, calculate and PLS algorithm, all right? Uh, 300, I'll pick up the factor here because I'm studying these factors. It's not, I'm not worrying about the path, the factor here and start calculation, okay? And go here to collinearity statistics VIF, okay? So here, green is good, uh, black is the borderline and uh, red is, is, is just, having an issue is an issue, but here I don't have any red. And what I care about is the ease of use as well as the usefulness of, uh, of the online system use. These two constructs, okay? So I have no issue here, okay? So all of them are green. All of them are below zero, uh, 3.3 .3 or below five. Then I have no issue with collinearity in this context, okay? So let me proceed further. Uh, with my uh, explanation here. I'm back in the presentation. So that's a step one. I'm done with step one. I'm okay with step one. Okay, let me now move to step two. Step two, what do I check for? Check, check for the outer weights, okay? All right, let me just move myself a bit here, make myself smaller. Okay, check for the outer weights, okay? Outer weights are considered or reflect the result of a multiple regression with the latent variable scores where the formative indicators represent the independent variable. So here, life stress, as I showed you here in the first slide, life stress is the dependent variable and its indicators are the independent variables. And here we're kind of showing a multiple, multiple regression relationships. Okay, how do I check for the outer weight? I use bootstrapping, okay? The most significant, uh, the outer weights are, or the more significance, the more contribution. Like for instance, if I say, uh, let, let me say for instance here, job loss has a big significance on life stress, then it is contributing to life stress, okay? So the more the weight is, then the more significance or the impact of that indicator on the latent construct, okay? We may consider outer loadings as well if the outer weights are not significant enough. Okay, we're gonna go to smart PLS now and check in, in details. Okay, if the loading is below 0 0.5, then we have to make a decision whether to delete a, a specific indicator or just leave it. Okay, so we're gonna move to smart PLS now. Okay, then please stay tuned. Okay, thank you. All right, fellow students, so let's check. Let's check the outer whites here, okay? For the two variables that we got here. Okay, what are the outer weights? These are the outer weights. Okay, so ease of use and usefulness, all right? All right, so here, no, that's not the outer white. That's the outer white, okay. Let me get the outer whites here, all right? And then draw a selection just around them. All right, as you notice here, these are the outer weights. They are not actually very significant, mostly below zero, uh, sorry, mostly below 0 0.5, okay? So as per our checking process here, okay, let me just go to the presentation here, okay, share. All right, 
uh, we have to check if the indicator, all right, if indicator weights is significant, okay, is significant, then we continue. But if it's not significant, we have to analyze the formative indicator loadings, okay? So let's go back and share. Okay, you're sharing. Okay, so new share here. Okay, share here. All right, so it is actually not significant. Then what we do is check the outer loadings now, all right? Outer loadings, they are actually significant. Okay, let me see here. The outer loadings here are significant, okay? And here they are, all right? Mostly 0 0.7 and above, all right? So we have these, the outer loadings are significant. If we go back to our process and finalize our process here, all right? So uh, go back to our presentation here, okay? And okay, so. The indicator loading is below 0 0.5. We test for the significance. However, here, the indicator loading we got here is above 0 0.5. So we keep the indicator even though it's not significant when we consider the outer weights. All right, so uh, we ended up the process right here. However, for further explanation, if we have the loadings as well below 0 0.5, we have to test for significance of the formative indicator loadings. We check the, uh, the p-value. If p-value is okay, then we can keep the indicator, okay? We can keep it, okay? Is below 0 0.5, we consider removal, but significant. If it is below 0 0.5, but significant, then we consider removal. If the indicator loading is below 0 0.5 and not significant, if the p-value shows not significance, then we delete the indicator right there, okay? So we check the loadings and we check the significance. If the indicator, formative indicator loading is below 0 0.5 and not, 0 0.5 and not significant, we just delete it, okay? Delete the formative indicator. If it is below 0 0.5 but significant, Okay, we may consider, we may not consider, all right? Okay, let's now report our results, very simple, okay? We had, we, uh, as we run the PLS algorithms, we have uh, retrieved the VIF factors for the two indicators, the formative indicators that we had. So simply what we do here, is we go into Excel format, okay, copy them, copy the results. And what I, for sake of simplicity, I have prepared a sheet here where I can simply uh, report my results. I simply paste what I got from, uh, from a smart PLS here, as you notice, and simply a perceived usefulness. This is useful, all right? So I simply, this is what I care about, copy. And that's the outer weights or loading, the VIF, sorry, will go here. So that's very simple. So Yusuf, okay. Not sure why I had this, okay. So let me just remove this number. All right, I may have added something to the data. Okay, so simply, I, I simply take those copy, all right, and simply paste them right here, all right? So this is for the VIF factors for this variable, for the ease of use, very simple as well, ease of use, copy, all right, and paste, all right? So simply let me just continue the formatting right here. Okay, so this is a part of it. Okay, so now let me move back to Smart PLS and go to the bootstrapping. This is what I have run. And what I'll take the outer loadings here, okay? The outer loadings. For the outer weights, I had some issues with the, with the significance. I'll, get, I'll take the outer loadings, okay? So simply here, I have this one significance issue here, significance issue here. Maybe this is because I put it as zero point. Maybe if I had the significance at zero point, then maybe I wouldn't have this issue. Okay, but uh, let me try to run it again using 0 0.10, all right? So calculate and, all right, let me go to the copy and then calculate bootstrapping 2000 and this is 0 0.10 instead of 0 
I may have some changes in the results, okay? Considering the outer whites, okay? Let me see. I'm using 2000 samples, okay? Just for fastness of operations, all right? I'll go to the outer right see, I have better results here. All right, so simply I can report because I have no significance issue here. The outer weights are not that high, but I have only a sig one significance. Okay, I may have here as, as well some significance issues. So I'll simply, as per the procedures that I showed you on Spam PLS, I'll go to the loadings, okay? Loadings are perfectly fine here, okay? And simply I copy, all right, as I did, and uh, paste, okay, paste, all right. And then uh, I will use for the, Okay, the scale here is formative, okay? The scale is formative for all of these, all right? I can, the trust is reflective, okay? So I just put trust here. I didn't, I'm not gonna move, uh, copy anything for trust and we didn't do any calculation for trust. We have done it in prior uh, videos, uh, but I, I don't do it here, but I wanna show you here that we may have some models where you can have two kinds of indicators, formative and uh, and reflective. Okay, and you can report the outer weights for the formative, or even the loadings for the formative and the loading for the reflective indicators. Okay, so okay, let me what I use here. Okay, if I go to my PowerPoint slides right here, to the last slide I didn't I didn't still I didn't present yet. Okay, for the in the last slide for reflective, we have we report AVE and the composite reliability CR. Uh, while for formative, we report whites or loadings and the T value and VIF. And this is what we're reporting in the T statistics or the T values. VIF, this is for the reflective models. We report CR and AVE and loadings, etc. Uh, we use bootstrapping to check for outer weights, okay? And we use the original sample, okay? Whites as the outer weights. And this is what I wanted to show you here, okay? Uh, we go back here, okay? And this is the sample, uh, the original sample. And I wouldn't need those. Let me just remove them. I wouldn't need those. Let me just remove them. Okay, and I wouldn't need this one. I'm not sure how I, I got it as an extra uh, uh, indicator here. All right, okay, so simply, uh, all right, simply, I will take the perceived those, so those ones copy and simply put them right here, okay, I'm good. And for the perceived usefulness, I'll just go double check the model. Uh, all right, perceived usefulness. I have five, one, two, three, four, five. And all right, and that's five, okay. So simply let me put that up on the top. And the same, I go with the original sample here and they put it right here. And here we go. Uh, here we go, that's how we report uh, our uh, formative uh, indicators uh, results from smart PLS, uh, the validation process and the results that we get specifically the VIF as well as the outer whites or loadings. All right, and as you notice, uh, my fellow students, by now we have gone through two steps, VIF as well as the outer weight checking through Smart PLS in order to validate and assess our formative indicators for a formative measurement model. All right. We got to the end of this video. However, please stay tuned. In the coming video, we're going to discuss higher order models and things will become much more interesting. So please stay tuned. Bye-bye for now. Thank <laughs> you.